Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to be continuing with definition 3 of book 5. The most important book of Euclid's elements. So why is this definition so important? Because it defines the ratio and the ratio is one of the starting points of how we begin to realize the concept of number. So let's begin. Now, Thomas Heath did a very mediocre translation of what's written in the Greek here. So let me read the Greek first. It says here on the side, it says, Logos esti dio meiathon omoyenon ikata Pilicotita piasiesis. Actually, kata pilicotita piasiesis. Okay, so if you try to translate that again, as I showed you in a previous video in Google, pilicotita, for example, means celestiality, which has got nothing to do with the topic. And uh, and if you go to the Greek Wikipedia, you'll see what they say about pilico. Okay, so. The correct translation of that should have been this. It should have been this. It should have been a ratio is composed of two homogeneous magnitudes with respect to how each magnitude might measure the other. Okay. So, so it's not true that what Thomas Heath wrote here is that a ratio is a certain type of condition with respect to the size. It has nothing to do with the size. It has to do with the fact that, with the quotientness. In other words, now what is quote, there isn't such a word as quotientness, but this is the closest interpretation I can get to the Greek word pilikotita. So the quotientness means if you have a ratio, as we would have, let's say, over here, let's open that up. Okay, so if we have this ratio, so, you have a ratio such as the circumference of a circle to its diameter. What is the quotientness? In other words, do they have a common measure? Okay. Now, any, you, you can actually define a ratio very simply as just the comparison of two magnitudes, and that's fine. But definition three goes a bit further because definition one really tells us that a magnitude is just something that can't be zero. In other words, it's part of another magnitude. Now, definition three tells us precisely what we mean when we talk about ratio. Now, we can have any ratio, but it's only a true ratio if both the antecedent, this part, and the consequent, or the later on when we develop number, the numerator or the denominator have a common divisor. Okay, right. So now let's look at what Greek Wikipedia says. It says, Stamathematica topiliko ineto apotelesma tis arithmetikis praxis tis diaresis. What that means is in mathematics, the uh, quotient is the result of the arithmetic operation of division. Okay, so paradigma toschadi idiarisi tu exi metotria dini pilico dio oputo exi onomazete diaret diaretios i arithmetis diaretios in the sense that we haven't established number yet or arithmetis in the sense that. Uh, we have number already, or uh, so how six, so how two, how six divided by two gives us three, okay, or six divided by three gives us two, which is the uh, the divisor and the denominator, okay. So it says topilico ino arithmos pu o diaretis chorai ston diaretio. So the quotient is the part 
which the device which the uh, divisor uh, fits exactly into the dividend okay that which divides Diladi, in other words sto proigomeno paradigma in other words in the previous example this one here the three uh, fits two times into six okay so this is the modern definition but this is not exactly correct of what pilikotita means okay the, the, there is no Greek word pilikotita which refers to something in mathematics. Piliko refers to uh, uh, divisor, uh, quotient in mathematics. But pilikotita doesn't refer to the quotientness. So the Greek word piliko means quotient and pilikotita means quotientness. In other words, what do do the do the parts of the ratio actually have a relationship and how do we know if they have a relationship we know if they are both uh divisible by a common measure okay and they must be different if they are the same uh, ma uh, magnitude then that doesn't mean anything okay so you can't say oh yeah well let's just make them the same no if they're the same then you're looking at something which is compared with itself and of course it's going to divide itself so in other words, a ratio is simply the comparison of two magnitudes, two random magnitudes, P and Q denoted by P colon Q, and how each and or parts of each might measure the other. So the comparison is purely qualitative, not quantitative, as number is only introduced in Book 7 through the abstract unit. So this is a very important uh, concept that... Um, uh, no, no mainstream mathematics academic or professor or teacher I've ever met has understood. Okay, ratio is about the quotientness of two magnitudes. So we can state a ratio, any ratio we like, A colon B, which literally means A compared to B. But <clears throat> when we look at the meaning of the word ratio or what's intended when we talk about ratio is do those A and B magnitudes have some kind of respect, some kind of uh, relationship with respect to quotientness. In other words, does something measure them? Well, lots of things measure them. The unit or equal parts of the unit, a certain equal parts of the unit measures both of them, okay? If they have a relationship. So now, when you look back at this diagram here, this ratio here <clears throat> is... A ratio from which a relationship is not realized okay oh yeah if you try to measure this blue line with this line here you'll arrive at the constant abstract measure of what we call pi today okay it's not a number it's an attempt to measure <clears throat> this magnitude with this magnitude okay that's all it is and so book three is a very 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 important definition and I said very a few times to stress how important it is and that you understand what is the ratio so if you write a colon b that is not the same as a vinculum b okay there are two different things a colon b is the name of a ratio a over b is the name of a number meaning that we progress from colon to vinculum if these two magnitudes have a common divisor. And that's it for this video. My name is John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.